With the sheer amount of games being produced in this day and age, it's inevitable that some will be cancelled during their production, but it's especially saddening to hear when games that would have been amazing also get the axe. Who knows how many awesome games got the chop before we got a chance to enjoy them. Luckily, however, every now and then, these great games are given a second chance. Get a new lick of paint, change entire IPs sometimes, and released to universal acclaim. So this episode, we take a look at five great titles that were officially cancelled at one point, but finally saw the light of day under a new guise. As opposed to people who probably wish their games were actually cancelled. <laughs> but, hello you. I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five cancelled games resurrected as legendary titles. Night trap, da 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 da, watch out behind you! Ha <laughs> ha! More words are being written about Night Trap than 95% of all other games out there, which is quite impressive for a cheesy FMV title starring her out of different strokes. The main attraction of which is seeing a bunch of girls dance about with a tennis racket. Hmm. But thanks to those zombie ninja vampire things, augurs, and their blood sucking ways, Night Trap did manage to gain quite a bit of notoriety. Which might not have been the case had it come out in its more genteel, original form. The idea for Night Trap was based on a play that designers James Riley and Rob Fulop had seen called Tamara, which took place in several rooms. The audience had to choose what parts of the story they wanted to see, and this was represented in Night Trap through the use of surveillance cameras that you switch to and from to catch augurs in the act. However, this idea was first used for a demo called Scene of the Crime which was a much more straightforward affair, where you use the cameras to find out who's stolen a fat wad of cash. No waddling vampires, no tennis rackets, no cheesy music, or blood being sucked through a tube. At one stage, this could have been made into a full game. However, it was a bit too generic in the end, and so the system would be used as a basis for a much more fun adventure. However, thinking about it, what would have happened if this had come out instead of Night Trap? Well, for one, we'd all be out of a job. <laughs> Speedball is, well, it's brilliant, isn't it? Everyone beats each other up in pursuit of a metal ball, and a crowd fueled by violence and ice cream roars them on. It doesn't get much better than that. But the story of this series could have been so utterly different if another publisher had had their way. Fresh off the success of their first game, Zenon, the young Bitmat brothers were looking for a publisher to work with for their second title. Enter the budget game's powerhouse, Mastertronic who saw these guys who made themselves hot with an arcade-style space shooter and wanted to set them to work on a game based on... real tennis. You know, the tennis game that's got a weird course with a roof and all that. The one that Henry VIII played before he started the five swan pies a day diet program. Seems odd, but the Bitmap brothers were up for it. They spent a whole week making plans and researching the sport, getting ready to pitch it to Mastertronic. However, someone had a change of heart. As soon as the bitmap sat down to meet with Mastertronic, the first thing to come out of their mouths was, um, we've changed our mind. Nice one. And so, all that real tennis work ended up in the bin. Later on that day, in the pub, the original Speedball was born out of it and written up on the back of a cigarette packet. Game creation's a funny old thing, isn't it? If it wasn't for someone's foolish idea to do a game based on real tennis, of all things, we might have never got one of the greatest multiplayer games of all time. When a particularly big and well-liked game comes out, it's not uncommon for games that are, well, somewhat similar to come out in the following months. For instance, if it wasn't for Dark Souls, we wouldn't have Lords of the Fallen. And where on earth would we be without that game? <laughs> 
The success of Capcom's stalking Resident Evil 4 also inspired a few to try and beat it at his own game as well. In particular, Ubisoft's Cold Fear in 2005, a rather criminally overlooked survival horror game that does have fans, but was dismissed at the time for copying Resident Evil 4 a bit too much. And yet, it could have been so very different. The game was made by Darkworks, the same folk who made Alone in the Dark the new nightmare a couple of years previously. But surprisingly, Ubisoft were not the original publisher. The game instead was going to be published by Namco of all people, and they had another idea. They wanted an action RPG based on Time Crisis, with the working title of Time Crisis Adventure. Makes sense, doesn't it? You've got a series that everyone loves for its on-rails ducking undercover shooting action, so why not change it to a game where you walk about, level up, and take care of Wild Dog that way instead? It's like Resident Evil Survivor, only in reverse. A few screenshots do exist of this odd take on an established franchise, but Namco eventually decided that the best thing for Time Crisis was to concentrate on games that were, well, like Time Crisis, and so it was cancelled in 2004. However, Darkworks were then able to sell the game to Ubisoft, and it got changed completely into the game we all know and vaguely remember today. Also, fun fact, Marilyn Manson also got involved somewhere along the line as well. Not bad for a game that everyone struggles to remember the name of for five minutes when it comes up in conversation. Not even the posters in Watch Dogs plastered everywhere in the game triggered any nostalgia. Why does Watch Dogs keep cropping up in these videos all the bloody time? And now, here's one that a lot of you might know already, but if I don't include it, then it'll be mentioned in 90% of the comments. Now, whereas Namco ended up thinking that a third-person adventure Time Crisis game wasn't the way to go, Nintendo managed to go all the way with their endearingly slow as molasses 3D flying shooter Star Fox, or Star Wing, or Lilac Wars, or whatever they're calling it this week. This all started with a game called Dinosaur Planet, that Rare was putting together around 1999, initially for the Nintendo 64. You can find quite a lot about it online, and while there's no playable version around, there were screenshots, trailers, voice acting, and even an hour of gameplay. So people did actually know about Dinosaur Planet, and were surely anticipating it. And then along came Shigeru Miyamoto. Shixi had one look at Dino Planet, and thought, hey, the characters look quite a lot like the ones in Star Fox. Other folks at Nintendo agreed. And so, the decision was made to change Dinosaur Planet into the bang average GameCube title we all know and don't really care much for today. A fair bit of the original game is still very much in Star Fox Adventures, such as it's still set in a place that's literally called the Dinosaur Planet, as well as furry waifu Crystal, who was even the protagonist of Dinosaur Planet at one point. A brilliant move by Nintendo then, killing two birds with one stone by strangling a potential new franchise before it's even born, as well as cheapening one of their other franchises that didn't have a plumber or a copyright infringing Robin Hood in it. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. Yeah! And of course we have to end with another big game which can't not really be mentioned. Seriously, the comments would be even more of a wasteland if I didn't. Still, the original Halo deserves to be on here, seeing as it's changed its form almost completely, not once, but twice, before finally coming out and actually being really good. Initially, Halo was set for release on both the Mac and Windows respectively, something befitting developers Bungie, who had previously given Mac owners who were hungry for games something to shout about with the Marathon series. The game apparently wowed Journos as a private showing at the 1999 E3, at which point the game was a real-time strategy title. Steve Jobs himself announced the title during the Macworld conference in the same year. The next year, Halo would make a full public appearance at E3, where it wowed people again, this time however, in a different form. At some point, Halo had switched from an RTS to a third-person shooter. You know, like half the games on this list. The main storyline for the game, with a Covenant and Flood and Master Chief and all that, was very much in place. And then Microsoft bought Bungie, 
making the game an Xbox exclusive and changing it once again into an FPS. <laughs> Sorry Mac owners. However, the hype for Halo actually seemed to die down considerably with each new version. People were pretty meh about the FPS Halo when it was shown at E3 in 2001, and much less was expected of it. And then suddenly, the game came out and wowed everyone, a proper FPS for console people to truly get excited about. It was long and difficult, but Halo finally made it. They even managed to revisit the original RTS concept eventually with the somewhat liked Halo Wars games. Even the Mac finally managed to get a game a couple of years later. And so, for once, at the end of this video, everybody wins. Well, except for Croyd. Hello you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified. And be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. Ta-ra for now.